I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today we're looking at two new radios from FreeSky, the X Lite Pro and the X9 Lite. And what these radios have in common is that they both support FreeSky's new air protocol, Access Protocol. Now, if you don't know what Access Protocol is, you know what? I got a video about what Access Protocol is and what it brings to the table. It brings a whole lot of new features that some of you are going to be excited about. And well, let's face it, some of you are not going to be excited about. But in addition to supporting the Access Protocol, these radios actually fill in little niches in FreeSky's ecosystem. The X9 Lite can be had for about 70 bucks, which means that instead of buying like a cheap $60 FlySky radio, this is actually a better choice in my, well, anyway, we'll talk about that. And the X9, the X Lite Pro, the naming is so annoying. X Lite Pro, X9 Lite, <clears throat> and the X Lite Pro, takes the x Lite radio that lots of you guys love and fixes a few things that you hated about it and adds a few pretty cool things, just basically makes it even better. Stay tuned. Before we review these radios, let me just start by addressing a kind of elephant in the room, and that is backwards compatibility. So both of these radios support the new FreeSky Access Protocol, and there has been some concern about whether FreeSky intends to support the older, like, D16 protocol receivers. And that's a big question because, yes, you can update your RXSR receivers and your XM receivers, and soon to be your XM Plus receivers, and that's most of the receivers that most of us uh, ha have on our quads, you can update those receivers to support the new access protocol. So you're not going to be left out, but you're still going to end up in situations where there's a D16 receiver that maybe you can't upgrade for some reason. I don't know. Like you got a tiny whoop with the built-in SPI crazy bee receiver. And so if you're worried that a D16 receiver is not going to be supported, you're going to be left out in the cold. You're okay with these radios. But if you've got a D8 receiver, Emax Tiny Hawk, D8 receiver, FreeSky has made no indication that they intend to have backwards support for D8 receivers. And yes, it's like 10-year-old protocol, but also, yes, there's still quads out there, mostly bind and flies with D8 receivers in them. So if D8 support is a must-have for you, bye. Joshua from the future here, don't go. This is a very fast moving topic. And between the time I've recorded this video and the time that it's being published, there have been some rumors, nothing official as far as I know, that FreeSky may be gonna add D8 support as well. So let's keep that in mind. As of today, the day I'm making this video, these radios will support access protocol and with a firmware update, D16 protocol and it seems like they're going to support D8 too, although that is not officially confirmed right this minute, but it might be confirmed by the time you're watching this. Check the comments. I'll put a, I'll put a pinned comment down below if support for D8 is confirmed. If you need D16 support, you're going to be okay. And if you're just getting into the hobby and you're only interested in access receivers, well, first of all, FreeSky is very happy to hear that. That's, they would love for you to forget that other stuff existed. So then let's start with the X9 Lite. And this is a new budget entry into FreeSky's ecosystem. I've seen it listed for as much as $90 and as little as $70. And we have to compare it to the previous budget entry in FreeSky's ecosystem, the QX7. Personally, I've never liked the sort of wide and flat and angular form factor of the QX7. I never liked the feel of it as much as I like this sort of more rounded and hand, fits your hand better form factor of the X9D. So the fact that now there's a budget radio available in a form factor more similar to the X9D to me is a good thing. I have to say though, there are many people out there who bought the QX7 as their first radio and love it. Love it, love it, love it. Stinger Swarm flew a QX7 for a long time until he switched to the Nirvana. Speaking of ergonomics. <laughs> so the choice between the X9 Lite and the QX7 is not an obvious one for everybody, but for me, this is absolutely the form factor that I prefer. The gimbals on it, passable. I'm not really a gimbal snob. 
Um, they feel pretty good to me. They're, they feel a lot better than the gimbals, unlike this is the $60 Flysky radio. These gimbals are looser. They don't center with authority, and they wear out pretty fast. I'll tell you that. These gimbals, they feel decent. The, I like the length of the sticks better, and I like the length of the throw. This radio feels a little smaller than the X9D in my hands, but overall, I, the ergonomics are just right for me. As far as switches goes, they've definitely pared them down compared to the X9D. There's a two position in the upper left, three position, three position, three position, and momentary. Uh, there's also a single potentiometer, no side sliders or anything like this. This is definitely a beginner-focused radio, and the assumption is that a beginner would not be trying to do 8,000 different aux modes. This is more than enough switches for almost anybody running a multi-rotor, unless you're a real weirdo who likes to do a whole bunch of fancy modes, and probably more than enough for many people running planes, although people running planes is not really the focus of my channel. Another change they've made to this radio that I really like is it's now powered off of 18650 cells. This is a little bit controversial. Uh, let's just, can we all agree that they're better than double A's? Okay. <laughs> it's a little controversial because yes, if you were to take this same battery bay and stuff in uh, a LiPo, like a 2S or 3S LiPo, you would get more usable capacity. But 18650s are so easy to charge. You just get a little four bay charger, you stick them in there, they charge overnight and they're ready to go. Just have a case with four or six spares and anytime you need, if you run these down in a day of flying, it's so easy to swap them out. For quadcopters, the hassle of dealing with a LiPo charger is worth it. But every time I have to open up the back of my Tyrannus and pull out the balance cord to charge my LiPo, it's so freaking annoying. To be fair, I only have to do that like once a month, so 18650s, that's how it runs. The interface is gonna be very familiar to anybody who has used OpenTX before, and very confusing to anybody who hasn't, but it's just standard OpenTX, just like on your QX7. Uh, everything should look very, very familiar there. One nice addition is they have switched to a jog wheel here. The QX7 has a flat rotary jog wheel. This one is a cylindrical one, very similar to other radios out there, and it works pretty well. Unlike the jog wheel on the Jumper T16, one click is one line on the menu. For some reason, the Jumper T16 jog wheel, you click two or three times and it goes one line down. It's like the clicks don't mean anything. Thank you, FreeSky, for getting this right. Now, this is the point where you may expect me to start diving into this menu and talking about all the access specific stuff that's new and fancy in this radio, but I'm not gonna do that. I've got another video where I go into all the new stuff that the access protocol brings to the table. I go through these menus, I show you how to set up the receivers, bind the receivers and do all that fancy stuff that you can do with this radio. And there's a link to that video down in the video description, of course. In this video, we're just gonna take these radios on their own merits separate from the whole question of what access protocol brings to the table. On the bottom of the radio, we've got the trainer port, headphone port for listening to callouts. This is a servo plug that is used to flash new firmware to receivers. This is where your SD card slot goes, and this is USB. The radio does not come with an SD card, so if you buy this radio, you're gonna wanna go buy a eight, eight or 16 gig is the most, you, you really only need like two gig, but you can't even buy two gig cards anymore. Don't waste time on a th or money on a 32 gig or 64 gig card. In fact, these radios will not read anything bigger than 32 gig. If you have a 64 gig card sitting around and you're just like, whatever, I'll use it, can't do that. So 32 gig max, eight or 16 gig is fine. You're gonna need to buy one and you're gonna need to download the SD card contents yourself. I'll put a link in the video description for where you can download that from. If you don't do that, the radio will work fine, but you won't get like audio callouts, for example. And then finally, there's a USB port here. This can be used to configure the radio, to download and backup models to the radio, and it can be used to connect the radio to your computer as a game controller so you can use this radio for your simulators. One thing it does not do, however, is it does not USB charge the batteries internally. You will need an external USB charger. Next, we come to the X-Lite Pro. And this radio is so similar to the original X-Lite, which I reviewed on my channel, that I'm mostly gonna focus on the things that it improves. If you wanna know whether this radio is for you, I'm gonna encourage you to watch my original review of the X-Lite down in the video description. Because the main thing that I think you gotta ask yourself about this radio is how you feel about the ergonomics and I address that really in depth in that video. The short version is that for me, as a pincher, 
I didn't find this radio comfortable to use for a long time. I think that as a thumber, it's, it's really good. But I have to tell you, I know other pilots who fly with this radio, and yes, even some of them are pinchers, and they love it too. So don't assume that just because you're a pincher, it's not for you. You kind of, if you can get your hands on one, that would really be ideal. So what did the X-Lite Pro improve compared to the original X-Lite? One of the things they improved is that it has internal charging via USB. You do not need a separate charger for your 18650 cells uh, if you have this radio. Just plug it into USB at the end of the day. In the morning, it'll be fully charged. And oh, by the way, if you heard me say 18650 and you're like, nah, -uh, it doesn't take 18650. It takes 18... Get out of there, you. Get out of there. Get. It takes 18500s. <laughs> it comes with 18650 extended battery caps. And yeah, why wouldn't you? Why would you? I mean, if you've got a bunch of 18500 sitting around and they get you through a day of flying, more power to you. But obviously 18650s are going to be bigger and better, right? So you switch. And I, I like the fact that like nothing else in the world uses 18500s. They all use 18650s. So let's just have everything on the same battery. Thank you, FreeSky, for including these big ups on that. It doesn't. Okay, it looks just a little weird. It kind of looks a little weirder. This is a little better looking, I think. Well, anyway. Another thing they've done is they've added momentary switches on the shoulders here, one on the left and one on the right. And they're very sort of trim and flush with the with the shell, but at the same time, it's really easy to find them with your fingers and, and access them. That's very nice. It used to be the only momentary switches the radio had was this game controller D-pad here, which... I still kind of don't know what that's for, but I think they just wanted it to look like a game controller. But it's nice that there are momentary switches that are a little more accessible while you're flying without taking your thumbs off the sticks. The gimbals on the X-Lite Pro are full metal CNC Hall Effect gimbals, and they feel pretty good to me. I'm not really a gimbal snob. I mean, like, I want Hall Effect gimbals because I know objectively they last longer. And I know objectively that they're more precise, but if you want a reviewer who's going to be like, oh, they're buttery smooth with crisp recentering and, and, uh, uh <laughs> I'm not that guy. They feel pretty good to me and they're presumably high quality. Another really cool thing that the X-Lite Pro can do that I don't think any other radio can do is it has an inbuilt gyro. Let me show you what that means. Let's create a new mix. And as the source, there it is. We can choose as the source gyro X and gyro Y. There doesn't seem to be a gyro Z. Okay, so we choose as the source gyro X and watch what that means this channel does. <laughs> there we go. Do you see that as I tilt the radio in my hands, the channel moves left and right? You can assign that you could play Mario Kart with this with your quadcopter. You know, like on the on the Mario the Nintendo controller, you tilt. You, anyway, here's the thing: Would you do that? I mean, nobody who seriously is good at Mario Kart plays with the accelerometer control, do they? They they all play with the joystick because it's more precise. And flying your quadcopter, the joystick is also going to be more precise. But it is pretty freaking cool. I mean, I probably wouldn't use this to fly, but if I had a camera gimbal, like a a camera or something, I could pitch up and down or use it as a head tracker or or maybe I wouldn't use it at all because like when I'm flying, I'm kind of like, wah, wah, wah. but it is really cool that this is here and there's all kinds of potential for interesting ways to use this. And I, I would love to see just as a stunt, you map the X and Y to pitch and roll and see people try to fly. I should make that video. I could make that video right now. <laughs> okay, so it's got a built-in accelerometer. It needs a Y, it would need a Y. Why does it not have a Y axis though? Say I can't do yaw. You couldn't do yaw. That's the problem. You couldn't do yaw. You would only do pitch and roll. You would still need to use yaw with your thumb and that would be kind of weird. Although we're not gonna go deep into the access protocol improvements in this video, we do have to acknowledge that another thing the X-Lite Pro brings to the table is the spectrum analyzer and power meter feature. Uh, these are added as part of the access protocol chipset, uh, and only the X-Lite Pro has it. You sure about that? Oh, it does. 
No, I take that back. Spectrum analyzer on the X9 Lite as well, but not the power meter. Well, how about that? To sum up then, who are these radios perfect for? The x Lite Pro is perfect for an intermediate to advanced pilot who wants to spend about $200 on a radio and loves this form factor. This is an incredibly well-built, incredibly feature-packed radio. If you're okay with the form factor and $200 is your budget, this is an excellent, excellent choice, as long as you don't need D8 receiver support. The X9 Lite, I think, is just about perfect for a beginner just getting into the hobby and has a budget of about $70 to $90. The biggest limiting factor here is going to be that without D8 support, some of the bind and fly and ready to fly quads that a beginner would be most likely to use are not going to be supported. But overall, I don't think that's a total deal breaker at a price of 70 bucks. When you compare it to something like this, this is a much, much better value for your money, even with a few limitations. That's going to do it for this video. One more thing I do want to tell you is that there are links to these products down in the video description. They are affiliate links and one of the ways you can help support me. Did you know this was my full-time job? I don't know if you've heard it, but this is my full-time job, making videos like this to help you spend your money smarter. Uh, and one way you can help support me in exchange for that is by clicking those affiliate links down in the video description. You may not realize this, but you can make any purchase after you click that link and I get a small commission. You don't have to buy, hey, you see this? You go, I don't want that radio. Just click the affiliate link anyway. Click the link, go down there, buy whatever you were gonna buy anyway. I'll get a small commission. It is a small amount, but it adds up and it really means a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching. What do you think? What do you think of these radios? Does the, not, not how big of a deal is the support for D8? Is that a deal breaker for you? Or is that like not a big deal? How excited are you about Free Sky Access? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. Thank you.